task, I just said this to one of, um, one of this morning. Is if it was easy, everyone would do a PhD, but it's not, it's hard. And uh, yeah, in the home finishing and looking up the mama, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, trying, <laughs> trying to finish. So I just kind of looked up a little bit about um, Eliza because we know people, but we don't always know everything else that they do. You know? So I just have a few little things, all right? So um, Eliza is in the School of Māori and Pacific Studies at the University of Auckland. So her back background is in public and community health. Her research interests include positive mental well-being, youth health, mental health, suicide prevention, Pacific and Cook Islanders health and well-being, youth development, and Cook Islands Māori language. She teaches Cook Islands Māori language uh, at the University of Auckland as well. So this group here, they're doing a diploma of Pacific vernacular language for Kailan Māori. And so this course kind of came from Mama Marjorie's dreams and desires that hold on a minute, we're teaching Chinese and how come we're not learning our own language and so the push really came for um, was it the Prime Minister to drive getting a you know, Indigenous languages courses at USP and this is the first cohort going through and now all the other countries around the Pacific region have copied the Cook Islands. So um, this is the first course in the diploma that's, this paper is, is being taken around looking at indigenous research methods according to the country that they're living in. So we're really excited to have you come and speak with us about your approach to your research as a Cook Islands woman and thinking about um, health and well-being of young people. Thank you very much for making the time because I know you're, she's teaching a summer school as well. So, you know, with technology we can do amazing things, huh? Yes. All right, so over to you. All right. Um, I'll stand at the start and then I'll sit back down there so we can be at an equal level um, because titles don't mean anything to me until we are able to collaborate and talk about you know, everything that matters to us as Cook Islands people. So, kia ora, nga tō kato tō e kia koutou. Kia ora. Kia ora. Me taki no te aru nei aku ura te kato tō api i te iopokuni e pra kato yeah, to research. Yes, the internet is a wonderful thing. So, the man who can you write about the idea of going there? Yeah, so yeah, so um, the internet is a wonderful thing because you get to stalk people on there. So I guess, um, <laughs> thanks Debbie for your little story. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to keep a low profile right now because I'm trying to finish um, PhD, but in amongst that, um, you know, life happens and I totally understand. Um, so the one thing I tell my class, you know, we, when we're in class together, we create a safe space. And I think that's, you know, important in the work that we do as educators. Um, to create a safe space where, um, because most of the students that I have are like second language learners, yeah. and we cannot think that we are a new me, and also the Kokaidense, we're just living in a vacuum where our community comes through and are able to speak our or understand that um, that um, So, yeah, um, we have second language learners, and we need to create a safe space um, for our young people. Or I'm going to get to mess up and feel okay about it. Cut the tattoo, it's terrible. Um, yeah, so it's been an interesting journey um, doing the work that I do with my PhD. So, as Debbie said, um, and you know, we give credit to Debbie and um, <coughs> the ones that's gone before us who've gone and did PhD, or done PhDs or done research on Cook Islands health and wellbeing. And, um, when I was asked to do this lecture at the start, I didn't realize that I was going to be the first one up after Dr. Sally Nicholas and then before all of those doctors and professors that's going to come and talk to you. But I'm excited for you guys because there's some great concepts of scholarly thinking, so we think it is, but really those 
um, solutions or those ideas actually come from within our communities. And I like to, um, us to think solution thinking, you know, because within our, our communities, but what's the, what's the solution? And um, so what I'll share with you guys today is a bit more um, leading towards a more positive approach or solution thinking to um, <coughs> the idea and also how we can um, teach our yoga um, in the classroom. <coughs> yeah, so, um, so my background is in um, public health and community health. But during my PhD, it's been a bit of, bit of back and forth going to health and then back to Pacific Studies. So Pacific Studies is a more interdisciplinary area. So it, it's got history in there, it's got social science, it's got you know, a whole host of other disciplines and it's got education in there. So for us Pacific people or for us Cook Islanders, we think holistic, right? I don't have the amount or art, just this. So in health, it can be a medical model on its own, um, whereas and then that's it. We don't think it beyond um, the clinics. Yeah. You know, it's just the issues right there, and then that's it. But no, there's a whole host of other stuff, and that's why I like about Pacific Studies because we think beyond just the issue. And we look at other things that actually um, impact Kumea um, Natura. So this is where Pacific Studies in the University of Auckland is located. And as you can see, it's not your typical concrete jungle that you would see in Auckland, I'm sure. And we know what it's like right in the city. It's like a concrete jungle. But you have, in amongst that, a father. Right? It may not be our Highlands one, but it's a reference point for a lot of our young people or our, our students, you know, attending the university. And one of my biggest things is to merge the worlds of academia, what we do in the class, with that of our community. Because at the end of the day, it's going to affect our children and the generations to come. <coughs> So, last night, <laughs> you'll have to forgive me, I've been trying to prepare for my summer school and they do all that the internet, they then may play out my way to that. Yeah, so I've been trying to prepare for my summer school classes and and then what you may have been able to do in the court, so mama, I think that I don't know what they were doing. But I was trying to really think about how I would um, broach research to you guys, especially from the perspective or through the journey that I've come through. And I had, um, <clears throat> I remembered I had a light bulb moment at 3 o'clock this morning, and I remembered the Kiorana acronym. Has anybody heard the, the acronym that was created by Dr. John Johnson? No? Oh, great. Sure. We can learn together or we can talk about it. <laughs> <clears throat> and I remember presenting this to young people because <clears throat> in a way that actually helped them understand a little bit more about research, the methods, the, um, the thinking, the underpinnings of how we envision an issue and how we try and solve it, and, um, and emphasizing language in there has been part of that whole idea of improving you know, at half and one being. So yeah, my entire talk this morning is going to be framed on the Kiorana acronym, but we'll go through it um, very soon. Okay, so we already know, um, I'm not really sure, I didn't quite catch the video yesterday. Um, I was trying to put it on the speaker and trying to listen to what Sally was talking about. But, you know, language to us, you know, um, does a whole host of things. And, you know, there's that thinking um, that a lot of, you know, the, the, the learning our language is not really an important thing now. 
and it's been an idea that's been floated way back here. Yeah, I'll be out with the Romani, I'll be here, the, the English, and the, you know, and other subjects and that. And unfortunately, the trauma of that has still carried on to this day. So, in a way, you cannot blame yourselves. Um, but we can move forward from where we currently find ourselves. And I'm excited because, you know, USP and through Dr. Sally and Debbie and, um, you know, there's been a whole movement to try and improve our language teaching and I know some people in this class were in the Māori course that James was facilitating and it makes you a bit more compassionate or understanding of those second language learners yeah. and also the language learning that our kids are coming through with you know um, <clears throat> yes so we already know what the language can be used for it's I usually like to just put that at the start just so that people remember why it is the way it is and why we are learning language in extension to whatever we are um, whatever we're teaching or learning about right now. Okay, I think I'm missing a slide. Okay, so in amongst this, um, <clears throat> The strength and, and individual sense of belonging and mental well-being. So that came out of the research that I had done previously on my master's, which looked at New Zealand born Cook Islands young people. And it showed that sense of belonging, language learning, uh, provides that sense of belonging and also um, it improves their mental well-being. I think it works out well. They will have a better understanding of what you're trying to communicate to them about. And I'm just preaching to the choir, so <laughs> you guys already know this, but it's good to be reminded. <clears throat> In a nutshell, really, language is like a container. If we lose that container, we lose all the contents in it. So that's like if we lose our language, of the um, you know, arts and crafts, because language is heavily embedded in all of that. <coughs> now these are just quotes, um, just to reiterate what I was just sharing before. You know, the effects of colonial rule on the thinking and attitudes of Pacific people about our own languages is still very strong. But we're making a difference right now because the Tiroko Dabukune and we're trying to make sense of where we're at right now. Um, we're conditioned to think that West is best, but we do find that the <coughs> solutions are actually right here in our in our communities and in our classrooms. Yeah? Okay. But I, I want to bring bring back, you know, some authors or celebrated um, academics or poets, um, and one of them is Kaurapa Kaurapa. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful poems that he has written over um, the years before his untimely passing. Um, and the one that I found was, you know, one that was directly to Aureo, um, speaking about how it is important that we nurture and take care of it. And this is just um, the research that I did in my master's in a nutshell, really. Um, posters are a great way to talk about your research uh, without having to do, um, without having to read a whole lot of pages. <laughs> so, you know, the Atwato, we can be innovative to make things a bit more digestible. Um, yeah. So, anything, you know. Plus, it's a great way to get you to think, you know, this whole thing that you've been thinking of and bring it back to what is the take on message that you want someone to walk away with. Um, you know, teaching 
um, with the work that I do um, came about because <clears throat> I'm on the train ride of trying to get our young people to think more deeply about themselves. That I am okay with them, you know, we, I think we're guilty of it, we tend to compare ourselves to others. Yeah. But if who they are and what they stand for and their identity and everything that they do, um, it has a positive effect on them now. Mm -hmm. um, so, does anybody know where in the world this is? Um, photograph. This is from the space station, but <laughs> the Pacific Ocean. Why not? <laughs> yes. And it's, uh, yeah, so it's one of the most photographed areas from the International Space Station. And one thing it shows is that, you know, we've got to think that we need to see from greatness. Because one of the most highly contested areas in the world is in the Pacific. And we are in the mix of it all. Um, yeah, so like I said, solution thinking and a more positive approach, even the words that we use and the language that we use is so important. Yeah. It actually makes a big difference. So that's why I thought, yes, we'll frame this whole thing that I'm going to talk about on the Kia um, um, acronym. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the spot or you know of Epidi Hopa but I'm, I'm sure it's part of your recommended readings, eh? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a yes, I think it's reading before. Yeah, it's a complete yeah. Yeah. And it's just a way of like, you know, getting us to refocus our thinking and not thinking from uh Papa or a Western lens, <coughs> but thinking more deeply about ourselves and who we are really as a people are. Yeah. We're not just a uh, sea of islands. And I'm sure with Evangeline coming tomorrow, now they you know, bring it all together with um, the Mana Moana um, talk. That you know, these islands that we, the, the sea that we just looked at, you know, that photo, and the sea that we see here, you know, are things that we see a lot, but they can tell us a lot more about us and help us think a bit more deeply about where we see ourselves in um, all of this ocean. And the ocean is pretty much, or has been, the highway for our ancestors. Yeah. Um, and we're not just scattered islands. We're actually really <coughs> highly connected um, islands. So a lot of the research that I do, you know, connects to a lot of um, Eastern Polynesian um, places, Maya, Waiki, um, Aotearoa, um, all these places because you know we have that genealogical link, we also have that history, and we can learn a lot about ourselves. Because the boundary lines were never drawn <laughs> until others came, right? Okay, I. Um, <clears throat> This has been a bit that um, has really bucketed um, the always thinking and all have to come to the I would know this thing, right? So <laughs> I'll get all the explanations to you. Yes, <laughs> it's a soft as well. So Mount Yes. Mount Yes. Mount as well. You know, there's a lot of areas that we need to, we can actually unpack and see the different perspectives that are important in working towards a solution. <coughs> so, um, which is looking up. And in our faith or in our Koganan's culture, really signifies who? That's what. Yeah. So, you know, um, so all the solutions, right? And I don't make it up. I don't make it up, you know, at the community. Um, because a lot of the, the um, solutions to the Dorai about the world. It's just the way how do we unpack it and how do we make sense of it, especially in our context and our um, understanding. So I usually translate it 
or I usually frame it against the work that I do, we are we are faced with many problems. Yeah, with the you know, it's got um, quite a lot. Yeah. So that's like all the issues that we are faced with. Yeah. But you can make sense of it in your own um, understanding. Um, and then you go through that, you know, if you put it in a long kit of tea, I get the color here, that icky and other way. And then when we come together and collaborate and talk about it, being understanding and compassionate and kind with each other, then that icky and other will find passage in the storms that we go through in this life. So I think COVID, in a way, has you know helped us realize that we have our solutions within our own communities and within our own practices, we just need to be uh, thinking a little bit more um, different to how we have always thought and um, yeah, and of course the solution will come through. So this is the Kiorana um, poem that was written by Dr. John Johnson. <clears throat> Kiorana is the unity of the heart, the mind and the soul within each of us. It is the act of humility positively reaching out to others. Um, K stands for Kitapakari, the wisdom of the ages. I stands for Irinaki, facing yourself and others. A stands for Apakuruma, patience and long-suffering. O stands for Ora, life. R stands for Rotayana, unity. A stands for Akaaka, humility. N stands for Noma, freedom. A stands for our love and love, all expressed for eternity in one phrase of Quran. So, Tatato, Otani, you know, Tatato, Arabi, and Tatu Raya, Quran, right? That they then, you know, we, we don't articulate the deeper meaning or understanding of, of such a simple term, but really, you are speaking life into another person now. So, these lessons, you know, um, you know, really resonated with a lot of young people because they actually now think a little bit more about when they say kill out now. A bit more mindful. So, <coughs> so like I said, the whole um, framing of Baku and Abune is all based on um, the Kyorana framework. So with Kitapakari wisdom, now research provides us with um, information that can help inform our, our decisions. Yeah. Um, in, in case having no research or little research that looked specifically at New Zealand young people, uh, New Zealand born young people and also our Thailand's young people, um, it was, you know, it became apparent to me that we needed to start work on looking at mental well-being and suicide prevention for our young ones because it had become an issue. It's still an issue. Um, and what are we doing to, to help alleviate that our that our And um, <laughs> when I initially started the, the work you know around um, trying to figure out how to design my um, vision years. Um, a lot of it had to come back down to um I'll be able to you know kupu anywhere. Make the you know soul side, right? I don't get that we usually you know have a, a few words that go with it. It's oh, it's a descriptive yeah. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> but understanding having that understanding of our language and also that of Papa, you know, it, it became apparent that, you know, um, I needed to think a little bit more around um, the, the language that was used when talking about uh, my research. Okay? Um, the wisdom in that too is that we cannot assume that one size fits all. Yeah. The approach that we have. I don't care, I did that that approach you that I need that that I always that you So we gotta think of ourselves as not just a homogenized group or you know, it's that what that well. Cook Islands is a term that we use mainly in the Eltato overseas. Yeah. 
Um, and that's how we identify ourselves. Because mama, oh, I think the play, but I'm like, what? But you know, to put your tattoo, or to put your tattoo, oh, no tattoo, my own, no tattoo, no no tattoo, my own, no more. Yeah, so we have to privilege that identity that we actually have. Because in amongst it is a whole host of um, ways of understanding about ourselves. And you know, to write it out, you know, um, and that identity has its own protocols or understandings or feel, you know, that you can actually use to unpack and um, talk about. Yeah, so we cannot assume one size fits all. But in the, the research, you know, when we talk to other audiences, approach. But it's not until we sit and um, you know, that's when we start unpacking it that, you know, I cannot take credit for like other groups um, or people that might be of a different identity. <laughs> you know, it's all different. Um, it's going to be different for the Bukhugans, it's going to be different for Mamalwal, you know. But it's not to say yeah, that um, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that there are parts in our, um, you know, our respective heritage um, islands that we also need to draw strength from. <laughs> so in the work that, um, you know, um, especially around mental well-being and suicide prevention, um, there's really been no research that's been done in the Kamane. So I had to start, you know, from New Zealand, um, because um, but it's not to say, um, so there's been like strengths and also, you know, there's pros and cons to uh, learning more about our people um, overseas because we have to remember the context there is different. And we also think about ourselves if we need to get at the context. Yeah. Um, but one thing is for sure, uh, there's been, there's a lot of solutions that we can draw from from here. So that is why I decided to bring my PhD back here, because there is a lot of foundational stuff that you know we've always known. It's just that we haven't tapped into it, um, especially around solutions, because part of the research too shows that. You know, um, after the age of 18, I think, they're a bit more solid or solidified in their identity. So they tend to have better outcomes, you know, in terms of education um, um, and just living life. Yeah. Then somebody here who moved here and then had to try and readjust to get out overseas. Yeah. And they tend to lose Dorado or you know, or trying to make sense of themselves. So there's yeah, so that was why it was important for me to open my company and think a little bit more about what are the solutions or the things that we've done right and can help our community or our populations overseas. <coughs> Um, part of the, the wisdom too is to also disclose, yeah, in research that you do not know everything. <laughs> um, that I, I can tell you this for sure. The higher you go up, the more you don't know. <laughs> but part of it is being receptive to changing times, the changing attitudes, um, and the context that we find ourselves. So as much as we think, yes, we go in this with uh, this the research that we go with, there's going to be influences on the side. Sometimes government dictates where funding goes, and then, of course, I would like to do money because they're going to pay for it. Um, and we get trained for this job or that job. Um, but <clears throat> part of it, too, is that we, yeah, we remember that we're, we're receptive to the changes that's happening around us, but we stay true to um, being receptive of what information comes out of the research. 
and you play it away. If you don't want to play with the other thing, you actually wait and hear what is been said, and then you try to make sense of it. And at the end of the day, it's your research that will speak for you and not the person, right? So, um, yeah, it's important to have a non biased thinking when you're actually approaching your research. Um, yes. So, yeah, it's good to disclose your position, um, you know, putting all on the table um, what you know and then being receptive to what will come out of your work. Okay, the next one is Irinaki, having faith in yourself. In research, faith goes both ways, um, especially if you're doing a research where it's qualitative, where it's, um, you know, so qualitative really is not dealing with numbers, <laughs> um, but it's also answering the question of why. Why are things the way it is, right? Um, as a researcher, you explore the gaps in the, in the literature, um, and then you try and understand the needs in the community, and then how best do you respond to it, yeah, without forcing your ideas or ideologies on others. Or, yeah. So for the participants, this value is essential because they have faith in their contribution to the study, um, and that will bring about positive change. Um, so with the research that I did, my participants actually ranged from the ages of um, 16 to 24. And it's an age group that, you know, Debbie is well aware of, um, if you have read her work. Um, yes. It's also an age group that we realize, you know, um, the approaches that we have for that sort of group is uh, a little bit different than if, you know, youth were at a certain age after 24. Um, because for Vito Itaka, that's when our children are a bit more mature, our youth, and are a bit, a bit more able to make uh, more mature decision, decisions. Yeah. Oh, feel free to stop me at any time. Um, <coughs> Okay, so the next one is, oh yeah, so this is just background information of like, you know, why I did what I did. Uh, <coughs> yes. So what I was just saying, you know, um, our New Zealand born partners are at high risk and our island born. What are we doing right here? But then again, um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of learnings going both ways. Yeah. Um, we also did the Rangimari report. Um, oh, in the Rangimari report that happened in 2012, 2013, um, for those parents or teachers that's been around, you know, during that time, we you would have seen this big, um, what is it? This big <coughs> event that happened, right? Where they did a bit of a research um, and they did surveys. Hmm. Yeah, with young people and and then they did parents too, eh? Yeah, and and this was in response to the number of um, suicides, death by suicide, um, in, in the books. Um, and I think we average about two a year. That's on average of young people or people dying by suicide. Um, yes. So you know that that helped put into focus, you know. Things need to be done. They tell you that you know, get to put up the yam on one side, and then that means up and down, and then you know, what on the other side, you know, it's all that knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. Really, on the thing, I'm just being curious. How did the you know the the man? That's a good question because you know that for the real me that I am. Um, so the real me that is a new sort of Maori term now because this this I it's your mind. The love of the The love of the The love of the The love of the 
or living is important to have. Um, so the, the study that I basically did was to gain an appreciation and a better understanding of where our young people find themselves at this day and age. And I don't like the term that our young people is the future. No, they're not. They're actually the present. What we do now, the policies that we create, that will affect the generations to come. But really, we need solutions now and challenges and relevant for our young people. So that, you know, uh, mental well-being can be privileged and, you know, discourage suicidal behaviors or that be not an option that they took in um, And also we need to change the narrative around um, <coughs> seeing young people as the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. You know, and, and, and not lead to the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. There's, there's a whole host of things that cause young people to react, right? Nobody just reacts for the sake of reacting, right? There's yeah. things that have gone wrong in order for reactions yes. to happen. Um, <clears throat> and I think one of the biggest currencies in our day and age right now is the is one pers it's a person's attention. Um, <clears throat> may, you know, I think you guys are not immune to it, but you know, our devices, our phones, um, yeah, they grab a lot of our attention. And it's changed the, the platform of how we communicate here. Yeah. Um, but pulling back a bit sometimes is important because the face-to-face -face contact, the social spaces that we usually interact before, but we're or at the beach and whatever, but nowadays, Facebook or Instagram, you know, and a lot of the times we're trying to keep up with what is um, happening, right? Okay, so next up. So this is just basically um, the methodology or the work that I did um, to gain the information that I was after. Okay. So obviously, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did we get a copy of it? So, you know, with qualitative investigations, right, it can be one-on-one -on -one and it can be in a group, but one thing that I have to reiterate is that safety is an important, is paramount, and you don't, do not focus your participants out to tell you what yeah. But there are ways, you know, if you decide to go with a bigger project um, in the future, there are ways that you can adopt that are relevant to us, the calendars, and you'll probably hear it from all these other experts coming in after me, um, just how they got around to it. Yeah, location is important. Obviously, when you hear the term suicide and mental health, there's already like red flags. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about it, or if we do, sometimes it has to be in a safe space. Yeah. And then, um, with the work that I did, I utilized grounding theory um, to gain information. So basically, grounding theory is not using information that's just already on the, on the shelf. Mm -hmm. You're going out there and letting the information speak for itself. And that's how you generate um, yeah, that. <clears throat> okay, so this is just who I um, interviewed. My study participants had about 24 youth, 12 parents, and an average interview would be two hours, two or three hours. Because it takes a lot, you know, just to talk. <laughs> Can I just make a comment here? This is for a PhD that goes over many years, mm -hmm. right? So I noticed that there's only 24 people, all right, and um, 12 parents. So when we're thinking about your action research project compared to a PhD, yeah. so this is what we're trying to, uh, we're just trying to talk to you about, is this mm -hmm. small, because, you know, with a PhD it's two to four years full time, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have two terms, and you're going to be teaching full time as well, okay? So you have to be doable, small. So, but the 
this is a PhD, so this is different, but it's still probably smaller than what you thought a PhD would be, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just a note to that, um, sometimes you've got to be smart when you try and interview people. Um, what I did was wait for constitution to happen, so it's a great way to just go um, and see if I can get um, time to sit down with potential participants. Okay, Rota Anna. So basically, you know, in research it brings together a collective um, number of voices, um, and then in this case, you know, young people and parents, but I needed to privilege young people's voices and just see what parents thought rather than their voices been the narrative that I push out. Um, yes, and it brings together an understanding of experiences, lived experiences that's relevant to us, you know, the context that we find ourselves in. And then, Aka Aka Humility. Um, it's been accepting of what has been shared in the research, putting aside what you think is right, um, and accepting the narratives that are shared rather than in your interests as a person finding out information. Yeah. Noir Freedom, the one-on-one -on -one interviews was face-to-face uh, -face, and it provided a platform for young people to freely express themselves. Things that I've just shared before. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me? Yes. If you don't mind, the can you just go back to the people's uh, Yes, really. Mm -hmm. uh, no, because the you know, there are the are the are the are the 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 are the 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm asking with this uh, translation of the Noaya Freedom. Yes, um, it's gone. Yeah. Two okay, 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 right. Yes, no, um, he has a reasoning for using Noa in the, the thing. Um, Tiroko i Tira Puka, no, I'm just, what was it, two Tanaka on the Pacific, on the Book Islands Culture book, the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Krokoman. Yeah. yeah, the um, other editors and then it's yes. all the different contributors and then two different I mm -hmm. because in or sometimes and how it had been used in the past. And then that is why it's great to read up. <laughs> but you know, to say that you know academic work is that shouldn't be criticized or whatever, it, there is a place for it. Um, and it's important that we give voice to that because <coughs> that's the only way we can actually iron out understanding them. So we add on. Thank you. 
fruition now. That's where all your findings come about. Yeah. And then you articulate that or share that with people. Um, usually when you're in the heat of trying to get out your findings, it's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> but you do this because you remember why you were interested in the first place. Yeah. It all comes full circle. And it'll be the you know, that that you know, is is important. Um, and then I'll just briefly run through what I have created then. Um, so you don't have to talk to me and all that. What I've come up with is the um, a model that is specific to mental well-being and to psych prevention, mm -hmm. um, and that looks at the ekatu. Now, our heads are like the centers. Yeah, you know that's where it's usually the seat of our emotions. Yeah, but it's your mind that dictates a lot of um, things. How you go about, how you share things, how. Um, you are, yeah, how you think. Um, yeah. So the air culture, you know, is something that is really relevant to the data that is found down. Function, um, you know, any occasion. I think not in the right um, yes, so the A culture is a big culture, yeah. but if we think a little bit more deeply about it, especially the A culture, and it's usually a sacred space. Um, so, maintaining your life, we're going to privilege mental well being with thinking positive and thinking solution based. You know, it's like the A culture when we adorn our minds, you know. You can just imagine all the good things that will come out of the newspaper, out of the TV, out of um, the things that government does. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of like things around us that we need to think a little bit more deeply about the and the meaning in our lives. They're, they're just not things, but they're, they they play a major part in our culture and in our understanding. So this is just, you know, some key concepts when, you know, you're imagining the ekatu, right? The intent when you make one. I don't that the money way, just for the sake of it. There's usually a lot of I don't know, of things that goes into gifting an A or making an A, right? It's the intention of loving someone. So the act of putting or wearing an ekatu um, promotes a strength-based um, yeah, opportunity. Just like how you say you are, the same thing that can be applied. And they are, they are, you know, the, the people to look at the ekatu and all wearing the A. It's quite a big thing overseas, yeah, especially amongst our young ones. We get that to have the money here with our money, the ekatu, the money, the money, the money, the money, the money, if it's not wearing the tag dress or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this will be made available with you. Um, yes. Okay, so this is just a step by step process, you know, um, when we're trying to articulate all the different parts of making an A. I'm not going to be able to do that. No. I mean, I know a lot of um, you know, young men back in the days. I'm not going to be able to do You know, I mean, it's usually not the ones with the flowers. They are going to go or, you know, like men. Very simple, straightforward. Whereas women, we like to do it up. Sometimes I'm hitch. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it brings out who you are as a person. Uh, yes. But the, the, in terms of the band, it usually is like into the family. Yeah. When we have a good back, backing um, for making an A, especially an A cartoon, we know where our motor and the air out of here. Out of here, it doesn't just fall apart. Um, yes. 
Sorry, I'm just going to repeat because I got past it. <laughs> yes, I'm And um, we look at the tie and the rectal, one that binds, and the spirituality is something that we hold in high regard. And that can be the twining or the wrapping of, or the bringing together of our lives, you know. Um, <clears throat> it can be a connector, um, it could be likened to our culture. Then you have the materials that represent everyday life. Uh, we've been resourceful, we do that way, you know, me hare re te te are. And then these are, you know, hare re re te te are, you can stick around and you can hear long, you can hear that. And obviously, you know, they use what is in front of them. So it's been resourceful yeah, with what you have. Um, and the preparation of the materials are, it's usually a communal process. Usually, but the day they may know, but it's up when the people are in that way. But otherwise, you know, me am in a part of the part of the net, don't know if I'm going to edit, I'm going to edit, I'm going to Yeah, so they're involved, so it takes, you know, a little bit of a community. Maybe I'm going to live by that. But it's more fun, I don't know if I'm going to edit, I'm going to edit. So the style, you know, can represent your know, creativity, the kinds of people that we come into contact with, that identity is not always the same, and that goes for sexual identities, you know, we have to be a bit more compassionate um, to understand, you know, as people present themselves. Um, also be mindful of the evolving realities, yeah. Time doesn't remain stagnant, it moves. But how do we move, you know, with the times, but trying to remain relevant and um, appropriate. Um, it also speaks to the resilience of this culture and, you know, most of our ace. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's been respectful. Um, so no one man can do is the same. Each one is unique. And that's one thing that I want to leave with you guys, especially when we're looking at social prevention. You know, they're not just a number. They are actually somebody that has a lived experience or has been part of our lives. And you know, the grief that comes with it, you know, this um, you know, it heightens people's fears and um, negative thinking to, you know, especially families that have been affected by this. Yeah, I and mean, you cannot tell me that you have not heard of someone that you've known. That have died by suicide. Um, but we have to think of them more than a number, but more um, <coughs> that they have been somebody unique. Yeah. So, stories, you know, are healing, and sharing of experiences are great, but also we need to be a bit more compassionate and also, um, you know, turn out with a lot for families that's gone through. Um, and grief doesn't. It's different for everybody. Yeah. Um, that's it from um. <laughs>
心不快，然后打到一半，怎么办？对对对，哎，我不管，我我第一，哎，我老是不管。你那，你怎么偷的呀？哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，哎呀，你打完几次啊？就五次。给他们几个人来，再再给你一个。好，有你也来，对不对 ？Thank you， 我们家的，多谢谢。我们家的，你们打住了。哎，我们家的，我们家的，我们家的，我们家的，我们家的，我们家的。